Hey, what is going on YouTube? Aaron here. Welcome back, everybody. Today we are in the Kitakaze, the Japanese Tier 8 gunboat, as we get this beautiful cinematic view. This game is really beautiful sometimes, man. Uh, but today is the Kitakaze review. After the buff, as you guys know, she got a buff to her HE shell penetration, as well as a few other things. But I just wanted to revisit this ship because... I forgot how nasty she can be. She was good before the buff, but now she is even better. You couple that with the strong or decent health pool that she has and the insane torpedoes with the reload booster, and you have yourself a formidable foe. Not only is she good against destroyers, but like we talked about with that, that decent health pool, it's not the best, you know, in terms of like the Kaba or something, but that health pool, you can open water gunboat and be an absolute menace to battleships as well. Like we mentioned though, the AP on broadside destroyers absolutely rips and we actually have a few videos of us dev striking a few destroyers with her guns. Um, those will probably be YouTube shorts later, so pay attention for those in the future. Also, today is Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I'm not sure when this video will release, probably today, but happy Thanksgiving regardless. We're going to have a little giveaway. Uh, Wargaming gave me a few boats for my 9K celebration. I just had my 30th birthday. Life is life is pretty good, man, and just you just got to be thankful. So I just wanted to give a, a quick little shout out and, and appreciative thank you to all you guys out there. But considering we are in the thick of it at this point in the game, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the strategy. We have worked our way into the cap. It is a carrier game, which is a good example of, you know, this ship is just like a jack of all trades. She's not the most maneuverable, so we decide to go ahead and smoke up here, and that is when we notice the enemy Hayate, so we're going to go ahead and take a few shots at him. Our carrier did a fantastic job of trying to search out the destroyer, which is 1,010% your job as a carrier. I had a game the other day where the carrier just avoided the destroyer and he paid the price as the destroyer worked his way around, spotting me, killing me in the process, and then dev striking him. So if you're in a carrier and you don't want to be completely useless, make sure you get out there and try and spot those pesky destroyers. Speaking of, we'll go ahead and compliment our carrier once again as we try to get the finishing touch on this Hayate as he reverses and then accelerates once again. But in the meantime, we've actually gotten the cap and done a decent amount of damage to the enemy destroyer in combination with our carrier. On top of that, we have also got a torpedo hit. I know, Aaron, get an opening torpedo hit with a flood so that Roma is now on damage con. Uh, but he is kind of pressing in. One thing about this ship is you do not want to be caught in your smoke screen. Uh, you do have your torpedo reload booster, so you can pr potentially dev strike ships, but your torpedo angles are very bad. That is one of the balancing factors of this ship. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I did have some close battleships, which you will see as we pass one right here, which probably saved me from a few salvos from that Roma and Azumo, so a shout out to them. Uh, but, like we mentioned, open water gunboating is definitely a strategy. You just want to make sure that you don't do it too often, or if you do get slapped, that you have to, re you know, you, you will need to reevaluate that strategy. And one of the, you know, skills or talents of these type of destroyers is putting yourself in these engagements, either around allies or in positions to utilize island cover or your smoke screen. Because as you can see here, this Azuma is having a very fun time with this steady stream of fire. We all love a good steady stream, don't we? But there is a single fire. I'm not a, I, I don't think he's on damage con. He might be, but regardless, we're just going to keep the DPM pumping. We're getting a few penetrations. You could consider switching to AP. These guns are only 100 millimeters, so they're not going to be doing, you know, that much damage. We did get the HE uh, shell penetration buff. So, you know, hitting superstructure and, and soft armored parts of cruisers and battleships will get you a little bit more damage than you have in the past. Uh, but your main, you know, reliant is going to be those fires and AP when you can get close enough. On top, of, well, as well as your torpedoes, as you can see, the Japanese torpedoes, they just do a massive amount of damage regardless. We're going to wait a little bit, kind of cheese the island. We didn't know if he was going to shoot us. We probably could have kept shooting, but, you know, firing right before you go behind islands is a very, you know, smart tactic as you get one or two salvos off and the battleships sometimes don't have enough time, whether it be with turret traverse or, you know, target acquisition to hit you. On top of complimenting our carrier, I do want to give a compliment to the battleship in the Bravo cap here. He is kind of distracting the enemy, so we are able to help him in terms of DPM. For example, if he would have been at the back of the map, we probably could not have been open water gunboating as much as we were due to the fact that uh, we would have been the only target. Now, like we mentioned, the Kitakaze, as well as a few of the other Japanese gunboats, mainly the Akizuki, 
uh, do have that little bit more than standard health pool. So you can open water gunboat, but it's not as quite as much as the Kaba. On top of that, you don't necessarily have some of the armor, which can shatter a few of the HE shells. Here, though, we're actually kind of remaining close to these carrier planes to provide additional AA support. We did mention that the uh, Kitakaze AA is a little better than average. Uh, I do believe your guns also uh, act as dual purpose as well, meaning they add to the AA total, total overall AA bubble. Um, so just trying to be a little bit of a team player. And at this point, I realized, okay, I could go after this battleship to the north of A, or I could look at the mini-map, realize that a majority of our team uh, is kind of floundered at C, and they need our help as a majority of the enemy ships are over there as well. I kind of take note of what we have at A, and that is when the Z-44 decides to turn around. Even if our battleship dies up there, it's going to take that other battleship a minute. We do have this Azumo in the middle. He is kind of low, but if you look at the scoreboard, it's actually relatively tied uh, in terms of ships. Uh, but we do have that uh, additional cap, which is a huge advantage. As I've mentioned so many times in the past, getting those capture points is an essential part of trying to get the win or going for the win in domination. Now, I will say, and, and as we are in a destroyer, you know, sacrificing your destroyer early game to get a cap is definitely not worth it. Let me repeat that. It is not worth it. I have a huge amount of respect for players who try to get the cap early game, but let's just say that that cap was flooded by the carrier, the Giuseppe, the Hayate, and the Roma. It's not worth it for me to, you know, maybe trade a, a kill with the Hayate um, just to try and sit in the cap. If the cap is overrun, retreat, torpedo, you know, get the enemy to make a mistake and then go back and get it. But in the meantime, we have worked our way slowly over to the sea cap. One of the drawbacks of the Kitakaze and the Japanese gunboats, of course, is that they are a touch slower than the standard. Uh, we get up to about 35 knots, uh, so not, you know, tremendously slow, but definitely not fast in terms of destroyers. But here we have actually seen that this Amagi and Anchorage are pushing in. So what we're going to do is line up this torpedo strike. I'm going to go ahead and put one set ahead. Then we're going to go ahead and pop the reload booster button. You do get two of them, so make sure you're kind of using them when you need to. Uh, again, one of the drawbacks, though, is the very long reload time of the Kitakaze. So just keep that in mind. Truth be told, I actually find myself ending up with a reload booster in half of the games. So just go ahead and use that button early game. Um, and then if you're finding yourself needing it late game, then, you know, depending on the strategy, like we've said so many times, not every game is going to go according to plan. But what I find is, you know, more frustrating is having one at the end of the game unused, especially in a game where you potentially, you know, could have used it sooner. But here is a perfect, you know, example and use of that. We've got two sets of beautiful zoning torpedoes. The anchorage looked like he dodged. We actually shot him uh, a few times to try and get him to turn or not look at the torpedoes. Uh, but we actually connect two on the Amagi and he goes down. Good night. Thanks for playing. So uh, the game isn't over yet. We actually finished, you know, hunting down and chasing the carrier, but a very impactful game. I just want to make that known. Of course, this game is a high caliber confederate, whatever I put on the clickbait. Uh, but even if you were to die at this point in the game, this still, you know, would have been a great game in a destroyer. A lot of destroyer, you know, players think it's all about torpedoes or, you know, it's all about the dev strikes. And those are fun. Those are great. Um, and here's a great example of that AP just getting, well, it kind of it kind of hits off the belt here, but you can see a majority of those are actually penetrations and a few overpens on the superstructure there. But uh, 34 penetrations, three overpens with three shatters and three bounces. Uh, so all most of that AP uh, did what it was supposed to do, and we got a quick, uh, I, think, I believe it was around nine or 10,000 damage there on a cruiser. So uh, when appropriate, you should absolutely choose that AP. But back to the final point, I just... A lot of destroyer players sail around objectives, around other destroyers, to try and get, you know, torpedo kills on battleships. And while that may work sometimes in a majority of cases, or especially going against players who have more than 12 IQ points, um, that is not an effective strategy. So you should try and get the caps, but as we mentioned, don't, you know, sacrifice your boat in order to do so. Uh, basically, you just want to influence the game, and usually by doing that, and this is a great example, by getting the cap here and helping out our carrier, uh, we kind of influence the game very early on, and it leads to this snowball effect of your team generally doing well. Now, yesterday, this was actually one of the best games I got. It was just a painful day of warships. So we all know that those days and, and weeks, honestly, are going to happen, but you just have to fight through it. All right, but let's go ahead and use these superpowers of editing as we speed up this clip here. We actually missed the cap, which would have been a touch more XP, but fear not, we're actually getting a few AA kills 
which does contribute to your XP. And speaking of planes, here's a little tip. You can actually look at your guns and then look up. I don't know why Wargaming decided to uh, not allow us to look higher, especially by implementing carriers, but there's a little pro tip. Also a little tip, we used it earlier on in this game, I should have mentioned it then, but uh, you want to turn off your AA until initially, right? If the carrier knows where you are, just keep it on. But if they're hunting for you or they don't know where you are, turn your AA off. And then as soon as they kind of, you are detected, go ahead and turn it on again. Because by the time, um, you know, they recognize where you are with your AA off, if it's a good carrier player, mind you, then they will, um, you know, overshoot your boat and then we'll have to do another circle back at which point you can maneuver. But here is the kind of final sequence of this game. We have this Duncan out here who's kind of lining up nicely for our torpedoes. He should honestly know where we are, but if you look at the torpedo tracker, he's kind of maintaining that line. So we're just going to kind of launch it right on the line here. By the time they get there, you know, being as far away as we are, even with the faster speed that these do have, he's probably going to maneuver a few times, but it's pretty, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. Now here, I could have smoked up if this Duncan was truly focused on us. We could have smoked up here, but I wanted to, I was greedy, and I wanted a little bit of the damage on the Graf Zeppelin as well. Uh, so we're just kind of, you know, we wanted to get around that island, and we did, so we're just going to essentially park here and just DPM our life away. We get a fire on that Graf Zeppelin. And I thought it was, uh, you know, the carrier has that automatic damage con, but if you'll notice, it is actually still burning. Uh, so we get a little bit of that fire damage, which does tick our Confederate, and we actually do get some more penetration damage, and I think we get one fire on that Duncan, I do believe. We actually get two torpedo hits. I didn't realize we were going to hit more. Than, I thought we were going to get the one on the tail section, but we're actually going to get two as we Austin Powers right into this rock here. I was just trying to avoid the planes that were above us as well. So, um, you know, multitasking is a huge skill as we tick the ultimate medal in the high caliber. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but dodging those planes, dodging uh, potential salvos from battleships, and, you know, thinking about destroyers is all part of your job in a destroyer. So it's a very difficult role. Now, some people, you know, get a full concealment Shima, and they think they are super skillful, you know, sneaking behind enemy lines. And unfortunately, yeah, you know, you could be good that way. But again, going up people who know what they're doing, that play will be stopped very quickly. Uh, so, you know, multitasking and damage and, and risk assessment is basically your highest job uh, in a destroyer, or your highest priority in a destroyer. But there's the final scoreboard, 20... 991 with 147,000. I went ahead and went over the modules for two reasons. One, so you guys could see them. It's basic. It's my basic setup. But two, uh, we are not running the torpedo upgrade, which I don't know why they say it is an upgrade because, as you will see here, it reduces your range, and I think it reduces your damage as well as your detectability. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but i much rather have the longer range torpedoes, especially in a tier that is... We'll, we'll say plagued by radar um, because there are many radars, uh, some of which even outrange those 11 kilometer torpedoes. So that is the one thing about the Kitakaza I wish they did change, uh, but they did buff her. And here's our build, Takeo Karita with Observant Rage. Look at me now. Perceptive, you could run the argument for uh, Twist and Track for the Turret Traverse, but I think the Turret Traverse is pretty good uh, as is. And then Smoke on the Water, it's your basic gun build. Um, we also have Mordoff and Bay as inspirations. You probably could put Rumble or another, you know, th those are probably not the best inspirations, but that's just kind of what I have. And as you can see uh, with this game, we did a pretty fantastic job using those two. So the buffed Kitakaze, certainly a formidable foe. We didn't really get a clip of us, you know, dev striking a destroyer with AP or, or abusing the a broadside ship with AP besides maybe a little bit of that anchorage. But, you know, make sure you're choosing the appropriate ammo type. And yeah, that's the video, guys. Hope you guys have a great week, weekend. I'll be on stream, I think, tonight. We'll, we'll be on stream throughout this weekend. Uh, big week for the Buckeyes. Let's go. All right, guys. Hope you have a great one. I'm out. Peace.